Picture this. You're on a boat on your way to an exotic island filled with dinosaurs. Your boat crashes. You go ashore. You find an aqualops. Then, overcome with its cuteness, you decide to keep it. So you stuff it in your backpack and take it home. Somehow, your home country has no laws or regulations against this. So now you ask yourself, would an aqualops make a good pet? Firstly, what is an aqualops? It was a genus of basal ceratopsian dinosaur that lived in what is now Montana around 109 to 104 million years ago, during the early Cretaceous. In 1997, paleontologist Scott Madsen unearthed the only evidence of this animal known so far, a partial skull. Due to its incompleteness, Madsen originally presumed the skull belonged to Zavirosaurus. However, while he was preparing the specimen, he found that it was an entirely new genus and named it Aqualops americanus, meaning American Eagle Face. And when you look at the skull, you can see why. The skull itself measured around 3.3 inches long, and further examination revealed that it wasn't a fully grown individual. When the specimen was first described in 2014 by a team of four paleontologists, Andrew Fark, Matthew Weddell, Desmond Maxwell and Richard Cefeli, it was estimated to have had a body length of just under two feet. However, based on comparisons with related ceratopsians, this specific aqualops was likely only 60% fully grown. Simple upscaling would suggest a full length of around 3.3 feet, or about one meter. With this length estimate, we can use our formula to calculate the minimum space needed for an individual, which is the animal's length in feet squared times 10, which gives us an enclosure area of around 108 square feet, 10.4 feet by 10.4 feet. But like I've said before, the bigger you can make this enclosure, the better for the animal. I wouldn't settle for this enclosure size just yet, because we need to find out whether or not aqualops lived in groups. While we don't have any direct evidence of social behaviour, thanks to aqualops only being known from a single incomplete skull, we can infer a level of socialisation by looking at closely related individuals. One such relative, Cetacosaurus from China and Mongolia, have been found in groups of individuals which were buried together. However, these individuals were all juveniles, sometimes buried with one adult, but we've never actually actually found multiple adults together. This suggests that early ceratopsians may only have lived in groups until they got larger and more capable of fending for themselves. Cetacosaurus being social to some extent shows that gregariousness evolved early in ceratopsians, pointing towards a similar behaviour in aqualops. In later, more derived ceratopsians, we have found examples of herding behaviours to some extent, so it's safe to assume aqualops was a social animal, but only as it was growing. Does this mean that you will need multiple individuals? Well, not exactly. In fact, if anything, it's going to create a bond between you and the animal, at least until the animal reaches a certain age. Many pet birds, like parrots for example, live in flocks in the wild. They are very social animals. Because of this, they see their owner as a member of their flock, and parrots make excellent pets so long as you look after them correctly. So really one individual would do you fine. Like we did with Brachiosaurus, I'd recommend incrementally upgrading your aqualops enclosure as the animal grows. Assuming you're getting your aqualops as a baby, you are going to be starting off with a very small animal. Ceratopsian hatchlings tend to be around 10% of their adult length, so a 3.3 foot aqualops would likely have started life as a 4 inch long hatchling. If you were to keep that 4 inch long hatchling in a 108 square foot enclosure, you'll likely lose said hatchling. Instead, you can literally keep it in a big guinea pig cage. Do keep in mind, however, that many small dinosaurs had fast growth rates during their early years to reach a size that offered some level of protection from predators. Based on comparisons to Protoceratops and Cetacosaurus, Aqualops likely reached its adult size in as little as three years. So you'll need to upgrade the enclosure relatively quickly. However, after two or three size jumps, your Aqualops will be in its full sized enclosure. Smaller dinosaurs also tend to have had shorter lifespans than larger dinosaurs. At max, aqualops may have had a lifespan of up to 20 years under favourable conditions. So we've covered the enclosure size, but before we can move on to how you're going to keep the animal contained, I do want to look at the viability of keeping aqualops as more of a house pet. Aqualops, like all ceratopsians, 
would not have been the smartest dinosaur. In fact, its brain function was probably closer to that of a tortoise than a dog. It's not going to be aggressive, but at the same time, it's not exactly going to be trainable. If you are going to be keeping it indoors, you will need to have a dedicated spot, like a large caged off section of a room, to keep it in when you are not around. And you will need to clean up after it, otherwise you'll end up with one big pile of shit. I would recommend keeping it outdoors if possible, but at least you can rest assured that it can be kept indoors, just in case. It will involve more work though. How warm will you need to keep your Aqualops? Don't worry about it too much, as Aqualops likely had a high metabolic rate, and would have been more than capable of keeping itself warm. However, it's good to keep in mind how warm its natural environment would have been. So back in the early Cretaceous, the Cloverleaf Formation, where Aqualops was discovered, would have been a warm, temperate area, covered by woodlands and floodplains. It would have had dry and wet seasons throughout the year, with seasonal high temperatures of 30 to 35 degrees Celsius and lows of 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. The average yearly temperature would likely have been around 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. Where we live, it gets pretty cold during the winter, so we would have to keep our aqualops inside for a few months of the year. So like I said before, we need to discuss how to keep the animal contained. And when compared to the Brachiosaurus video, this is going to be practically free. Due to its small size, simple chicken wire would suffice. You might think with its sharp beak that it may have been able to bite through chicken wire, especially since its bite force was moderately strong for chewing vegetation. But chicken wire is often used to keep animals with strong bites, like rabbits for example and it keeps chickens safe from predators like foxes. So your Aqualops is going to be well secure behind its chicken wire fence. This fence would only really need to be three to four feet tall, as Aqualops isn't adapted for climbing, and that extra half a foot to a foot should prevent it from reaching the top, or any attempt to jump out. Since we know this enclosure has an area of 108 square feet, we can calculate that we will need 42 feet of chicken wire fence to surround the enclosure. I found a single roll of chicken wire from Suregreen, costing about 50 pounds. This single roll is 164 feet long, so you'll have extra in case of any damage. And it's four feet wide, making it a four feet tall fence. Next, you just need posts to hold the fence up. And for that, I found five foot long stakes costing 36 pounds for a pack of 10 on Amazon. Since these wooden stakes will be one foot in the ground and very sturdy, you'll need eight posts, four for the corners, then four in between. So again, that leaves two spare posts for repairs just from that one pack. Then I'd recommend getting a doghouse to keep your Aqualops sheltered. Zoo Plus has some nice wooden doghouses, but you can find some really cheap ones on Amazon for around 60 pounds. In total, you've spent just over 200 pounds for a full setup. Most of my audience is American, and I just gave examples for where to find certain things for people in the UK. However, I can't think you'd be spending more than $300. If that's not cheap, then I don't know what is. Though this is just an upfront cost, you will have other costs such as feeding the animal. So, what will you need to feed it, and how much? Aqualops likely used its sharp parrot-like beak for snipping vegetation, before using its back teeth to chew and grind it up. Ceratopsians, in general, were very successful animals, and these more advanced chewing adaptations was a major part of their success. Since we know Aqualops was a herbivore and chewed its food, what type of vegetation did it eat? Well, given the environment Aqualops lived in, it likely fed on ferns, conifer shoots, and younger, more soft cycads. Given this diet, you want to try mimic these nutritional qualities. For example, its core diet needs to be made up of leafy greens, similar to ferns. Dandelion greens are a good option, as they are soft and nutritious, while romaine lettuce is high in moisture. This should make up around 80% of its diet, while the other 20% should be made up of more fibrous plants like timothy hay. How much will you need to feed your aqualops? Well, it's hard to say. Assuming aqualops, like many dinosaurs, was more endothermic, meaning it had a higher bird-like metabolism, it would have had to consume about 10 to 20% of its own body weight in food every day. So how much did Aqualops weigh? When the specimen was first described in 2014, it was estimated that it had a weight of around 1.5 kilograms. However, this was for the subadult holotype. Since it was estimated that this individual was only 60% grown, we can deduce a maximum weight of around 2.5 kilograms by simply scaling it up accordingly. So since 10 to 20% of 2.5 kilograms is 250 to 500 grams, this means that Aqualops may have consumed up to 500 grams of plant matter every day. Therefore, to understand how much it's going to cost, let's refer back to our previous examples of sources of food. Dandelion greens, romaine lettuce, and timothy hay. You can buy dandelion greens at naturezonepets.co.uk, 
who sell dried dandelion leaves at £5.75 per 200 grams, or £71.99 for 5 kilograms if you're buying in bulk. Since we guessed aqualops will eat up to 500 grams per day, and dandelion greens and romaine lettuce will make up 80% of its diet, which would be 400 grams, we can feed it 200 grams of dandelion greens and 200 grams of romaine lettuce. Which means if you buy a 5 kilogram bag of dried dandelion greens, it'll last you 25 days. As for the romaine lettuce, you can buy that from grocery stores for very cheap. And you can freeze it so it lasts longer. As for the timothy hay, you'll only need to feed your aqualops 100 grams of that per day to make up the 500 grams of food. Which is practically nothing. For example, haybox.club sells 2.5 kilograms of Timothy Hay boxes for £12.95. And as long as you store it correctly, it can last up to two years. The 2.5 kilogram box of hay will last you the same amount of time as the five kilogram bag of dried dandelions, which is handy. This means that per month, you are going to be spending around 90 pounds to feed your aqualops, which is essentially nothing, at least in comparison to the other animals I have covered. This 500 grams per day is just a guide. If you notice any significant weight gain or weight loss with your aqualops, adjust how much you're going to feed it per day. So, would aqualops make a good pet? Actually, yes. Now do keep in mind that it is not a replacement for a dog, but think of it as one of those more exotic pets. Aqualops would make a good pet in the same way that a bearded dragon makes a good pet. It's a good pet for the right person, but not everyone wants a bearded dragon. That being said, this is easily the cheapest and easiest prehistoric animal to keep that I have covered so far. It's not going to be affectionate, but it's not going to be a total handful, so long as you follow the rules in this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any requests, I've had some really interesting ones I actually want to get around to covering, which I might be able to fit in sort of shorter videos or maybe sort of montage of a few animals because I want to cover as much as possible. So that being said, put in the comments below which animals you want me to cover. Make sure they are extinct because I'm not going to tell you how to keep an elephant. I will tell you how to keep a Brachiosaurus though.